something there is that doesn't love a wall, that sends the frozen ground swell under it, and spills the upper boulders in the sun, and makes gaps even two can pass abreast. The work of hunters is another thing. I have come after them and made repair. For they have left not one stone on a stone, but they would have the rabbit out of hiding, to please the yelping dogs. The gaps, I mean. No one has seen them made or heard them made, but at spring mending time we find them there. I let my neighbor know beyond the hill, and on a day we meet to walk the line, and set the wall between us once again. We keep the wall between us as we go, to each the boulders that have fallen to each, and some are loaves, and some so nearly balls. We have to use a spell to make them balance. Stay where you are until our backs are turned. We wear our fingers rough with handling them. Oh, just another kind of outdoor game. One on a side. It comes a little more. There where it is, we do not need the wall. He is all pine and I am apple orchard. My apple trees will never get across and eat the cones under his pines, I tell him. He only says, good fence make good neighbors. Spring is the mischief in me and I wonder if I could put a notion in his head. Why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it where there are cows? But here there are no cows. Before I built a wall, I'd ask to know what I was walling in or walling out and to whom I was like to give offense. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that wants it down. I could say elves to him, but it's not elves exactly, and I'd rather he said he for himself. I see him there bringing a stone grasped firmly by the top, and each hand like an old stone savage armed. He moves in darkness, as it seems to me, not of woods, only in the shades of trees. He will not go behind his father's saying, and he likes to having thought of it so well. He says again, good fences make good neighbors. So we're going to analyze Mending Wall by Robert Frost using soapstone, but first we're going to read through it again and see if we can find any figurative language. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that sends the frozen ground swell under it and spills the upper boulders in the sun. So off the bat, we see that there's something that disapproves of this wall and doesn't want it there. And there's a possibility that this could just be nature. And makes gaps even two can pass abreast. The work of hunters is another thing. I have come after them and made repair, where they have left not one stone on a stone, but they would have the rabbit out of hiding, to please the yelping dogs. The gaps, I mean. No one has seen them heard. No one has seen them made or heard them made. So there's kind of a mysterious tone going on here because there something's destroying the wall but the narrator doesn't know what it could be but at spring mending time we find them there so here we find that there's a tradition in building the wall or rebuilding the wall that happens every spring i let my neighbor know beyond the hill so we're gonna find later in the poem that this is ironic, that he is telling his neighbor when they're gonna build the wall because he's actually against the wall, but he seems to be the more proactive one about repairing it. And on a day we meet to walk the line and set the wall between us once again and keep the wall between us as we go. So right here we see both a literal and metaphorical sense of the narrator and his neighbor being separated. They're literally separated by the wall, but metaphorically, there's a boundary between them and it prevents them from being able to get closer to one another. To each the boulders that have fallen to each, and some are loaves, and some are so nearly balls that we have to use a spell to keep them balanced. So here we see another kind of mysterical and like magical word in the spell. Stay where you are until, until our backs are turned. We wear our fingers rough with handling them. Oh, just another kind of outdoor game. So here we see that the narrator sees building the wall as a game, which implies that it can be fun. 
one on the side, it comes to little more. There where it is, we, we do not need the wall. So here is the beginning of a shift in the poem where the narrator starts to talk about how he doesn't actually want to have the wall. He is all pine and I am all apple orchard. My apple trees will never get across and eat the cones of his pines, I tell him. So here we see the personification of the apples. He does this because the apples aren't actually going to come across and eat the pine. So he personifies it in order to add some humor and try to convince his neighbor that the wall is not necessary. He only says, good fences make good neighbors. So here we see we learn the neighbor's opinion on the wall and it seems pretty obvious that he wants to keep the wall because he thinks it's important to being a neighbor. Spring is the mischief in me and I wonder if I could put a notion in his head. Why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it where there are cows? But here there are no cows. So he starts to really question the the necessity of a wall and he starts to get more of a questioning tone. Before I built a wall, I'd asked to know what I was walling in or walling out and to whom I was like to give offense. So he wants to know who he, he's offending by making the wall, but it's really him. So this is kind of ironic. Something there that doesn't love a wall. Something there is that doesn't love a wall. So here he repeats the op the opening statement just to emphasize it and go back again that there's something there that doesn't want the wall and it seems to be him. That wants it down, I could say, elves to him. So here we see another magical element with elves. But it's not elves exactly. I'd rather he said it for himself. I see him bringing a stone grasped firmly by the top in each hand, like an old stone savage arm. So here he calls his neighbor, or he compares his neighbor to a savage, basically, meaning that his neighbor is kind of trapped in old ways and stuck in the past, which will become important later. He moves in darkness, as it seems to me. So darkness show is... A, a motif showing that he doesn't really see the truth, that there's no need for the wall. Not of woods only, in the shade of trees. He will not go behind his father saying, and he likes having thought of it so well, he says again, good fences make good neighbors. So here we see that the neighbor is a traditionalist. and wants to keep the wall just for the sake of keeping the wall. So now we're gonna go back through and look at soapstone. So first we have the speaker, and the speaker is a farmer that's frustrated about the wall between him and his neighbor. The occasion is the speaker reflecting on his experiences on mending the wall. There's not really a specific audience, but the story is relatable for people with neighbors. Uh, the purpose of this piece is the speaker questioning the need for the wall between him and his neighbor. He also highlights his neighbor's traditionalist views. The neighbor only wants the wall for the sake of tradition, saying good fences make good neighbors. The narrator makes a game out of repairing the wall and seems to enjoy it, which is kind of ironic. The subject of the piece is the wall that is being mended and the narrator's negative opinions towards it. And the tone begins as reflective as he looks back at experiences with the wall. And it's also sort of mystical because we don't know what it is that is destroying the wall. And then it starts to shift to questioning and frustrated as the narrator questions why the wall is even necessary. And is kind of frustrated that his, neighbors, his neighbor won't see his more modern views and is just stuck to tradition.